Hello and welcome back to the Ghost Droid development series. Today we'll be creating our asteroid objects. They'll be relatively simple, they'll kind of pick a random direction on spawn and then they'll continue to move in that direction until they are destroyed. So to kind of get started on this we're going to go create a new scene. This will be of other node and we're going to make this of type character body 2D. It doesn't need to be a character body 2D, uh, I just like to have the options available that kind of come with a character body 2D. So we have our character body 2D, we are going to rename this to large asteroid. Now we're going to add its requirements or the things that it needs. So it needs a collision shape, it's also going to need a sprite and it's going to need something else. So we're going to use the uh, shortcut control A if you're on Windows or command A if you are on Mac. And we are going to add a sprite to this. Uh, with the sprite added, we are now also going to go and add a collision shape to this. There we go. And finally, we're going to go and add our... Uh, if we use Command Shift A or Control Shift A, we're going to go and add our screen wrap handler. That will allow us to do the screen wrap that we want to do. Now, we are going to hit Control S or Command S. We're going to go and save this under the Scenes folder, under a new folder called Asteroids. I give that a second to create and then we're going to hit save. Now with that saved we are going to go and add a script to our asteroid. Let's actually first go and give this a texture. So to do that we're going to click Sprite 2D. We're going to go down into our assets. We'll go into the PNG folder. We'll go into meteors and we'll add the let's go the big gray meteor 2. So this one here. Drag that over to the texture. And that should be pretty good for now. I'm going to probably scale this up a little bit. Uh, actually, we're going to do this uniformly. So to do this, we're going to go into the Node 2D section of the Sprite 2D. Go to the Transform and we'll change the scale to, let's do 1.5. Makes it a lot larger. And uh, if we zoom out, we can see that this is the size of our screen. These kind of purple blue lines here. So is that going to be large enough for us? I think 1.5 is perfect. So with that done, let's go and add a script to our asteroid. So we'll click the little script button up top here, go and add that. And with that created, if you have uh, all of this code here that I have, that is because it is coming from a coding template. We'll probably look at templates a little bit later, but for now, what we can do is kind of delete all of the code in here other than the extends at the very top. So above the extends, we're going to add a class underscore name. This is going to be for the large asteroid no spaces like so and now we're going to want two variables we're going to want a constant variable for the movement direction and an exported variable for the movement speed so to do a const we just do const and then we use our caps lock and we create this in all caps so movement underscore direction making sure to be as uh purposeful with our naming conventions as we possibly can to make sure whoever reads this knows exactly what it is we're going to set this as a vector2 type and we'll set it equal to a vector2 dot right. Why is that? And that is because right or vector2 dot right is our forward facing direction. So we want to make sure it is a vector2 dot right. Uh, the next one will be a exported variable for the move underscore speed. This will be of type float and we're going to set that equal to 90 for now just to give it a kind of rough value. So let's hit control S and save. And finally, we can add uh, access to our ready and physics process function. So let's go do that. Let's go and write func underscore ready. Uh, we'll write pass in there for now. And then finally, let's do func underscore physics process. So with us having access to our ready function and our physics process function, we can now start creating the methods that need to go inside of these. And there are only going to be two. We're going to put one in the ready function and one in the physics process. The first one we're going to want to create is the randomizing rotation function. Why do we want to randomize rotation function? Well, randomizing the rotation will kind of randomize which way our facing direction is facing, right? So if we are rotated at 25 degrees, right is no longer right, if that makes sense. Or well, our forward direction is no longer directly right to us, it's like down to the right. So that's kind of what we're going for on this. Now to do that, we're going to create the function called randomize, randomize, there we go, underscore rotation. 
it won't have any extra parameters and we'll give it a void return type and to do this we're going to grab the rotation and we're going to set it equal to uh, kind of a new function right and this new function is going to be randf underscore range uh, with parentheses now you'll see that this goes purple, not blue, not light blue, not green, it goes purple. This is a kind of math related function that is built into Godot. This gets a random floating point between two ranges or between a range of you know, a low or a minimum and a maximum. So what is our minimum and maximum? Well, we want our minimum to be zero because zero is zero rotation. And we want our maximum to basically be 360. Now the two ways you can do this is by doing two times pi that gets you the 360 degrees or we can use Godot's built-in variable for tau which is two times pi. Now you can actually go and control and left click on tau here and it'll take you to the GD script uh, equivalent here. So pi 3.145 right normal pi constant that represents how many times the diameter of a circle fits around its perimeter. Okay, this is equivalent to tau divided by 2, or 180 degrees in rotation. Tau is 6.283, the circle constant, the circumference of the unit circle in radians. This is equivalent to pi times 2, or 360 degrees in rotations. That's why we want to use tau. So now we understand how tau works and why we want to use tau. We understand that randomized rotation will get a random range between 0 and 360 degrees. So what's the next thing we want to create? Well, we're going to want to create a way of actually, you know, handling our movement, right? So the same thing we did with our player, where we did func handle underscore movement, uh, open some parentheses, give it a void return type. We're now going to want to do something to get it to move. What we're going to want to do is a bit more specific than what we did with the player. So we're going to grab the global position. We're going to use plus equals. And then we're going to want to use plus equals the movement direction. Uh, make sure to remember it's all caps, so it will actually pop up. Movement direction times the movement speed. Now, if we just do movement direction times movement speed, we will get one constant direction at all times, no matter what we do. We don't actually want that. We want to kind of add the rotation that we've applied into this. So to do that, we are going to wrap the movement direction times movement speed inside of parentheses. We're going to use dot rotated. And then inside of rotated, we are just going to put in the rotation. What this is basically going to do is it's going to pick a random direction on spawn and kind of just move in that direction at a certain speed. So in this case, it will move at 90 degree or 90 floating points. So let's uh, finalize this, right? Inside of our ready function, we're going to want to call the randomize rotation uh, function that we created. Now inside of our physics process, we're going to want to call handle movement. And finally, move and slide. That way, everything that we need to handle is actually being handled correctly. Technically speaking, move and slide isn't entirely necessary because we're not using any character body specific things. It's just a good habit to get into to use move and slide. To well, when you're using character bodies to make sure that that's being used, that way any thing you actually do apply to velocity gets applied in this case nothing's actually being applied to velocity so we don't actually technically need to use movement slide but for now it's okay so hit Control s and save we're going to go back to our main scene then go to the, uh, to the 2d view under the entity container here we're going to use Control shift a or command shift a we're going to grab our large asteroid and instantiate that into the scene we're going to move this across to here so it's right next to our ship and we're finally going to hit play or run project and give it a second to load up. There we go. And you can see that it is moving one in a direction. It's moving straight to the top left, but it is now moving at uh, an insane movement speed. So let's go and change the movement speed. Let's change that down to 10 just to get some more slower movement. And let's hit play again. It's now moving to the top right of the screen and a little bit slower. Okay, let's change this down to five and hit play. And this is kind of what we've got to do to make sure that it's functioning the way we want it to function. I still think that is a little bit too fast. So I'm going to go down to three, hit play, and that should be fast enough. That is moving in the direction we want it to move, in you know, random direction every single time. And it is now moving consistently and at slow enough speed for a large asteroid to be considered, you know, large, right? We want the larger ones to be slower. 
that pretty much handles the entire asteroid or large asteroid movement and creation now we're going to be creating a bunch of different asteroids we're going to be kind of randomizing the sprite as well to make sure it looks different every single time and we will also be creating and this specifically is in the next video we're going to be creating an entity spawner so it will actually spawn these asteroids to a certain amount for us and kind of keep those alive and doing random things for us and then we'll also be going through a few little reworks to our kind of screen wrap or object wrap handler for now that's all i've got thank you for watching uh i hope you're having a great day and a great game dev journey and i will see you in the next video